Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Cesar here with a video here today. There's a brand new video here today, a Photoshop tutorial actually, on how to create your very own cool gun skins within Photoshop and uh, basically reskin these really cool objects, uh, in this case guns, and uh, yeah, you can make some really cool posts for creators and things like that. I've been doing a few of them, I think I did five so far. And they've all popped off, had really cool engagement on Twitter, so it can be a cool Twitter post for you as well. Uh, support your favorite creator and make them a cool gun skin. They might like it, retweet it, you get likes, followers, and everyone's just really cool and happy because they get to see something cool that uh, can possibly happen or never happen whatsoever. But it's just the idea, it's just fun to do. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you guys and break it down for you guys on how to actually get to point A to point B. And hopefully at the end of the video, you guys will be able to go inside Photoshop, make your own cool stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's all I got for you today. Hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. If you leave a like, of course, if you guys like the video and uh, subscribe, because like you should do that. If you're not already, it's fine. Like it's whatever, but you have time right now to do it. So you should do it. Now we're going to start the video. Enjoy. Alrighty guys, so let's break down how you guys should be thinking about separating parts of the gun to recolor. For example, this Phantom from Valorant has a lot of seams in the gun to create shapes or separate them with colors. If I were to quickly break it down for you guys, I see one shape near the suppressor, then four pieces that make up the body of the gun. So here at the top half, the front half, the middle of the body, then lastly the lower part of the body. With that being said, the rest should also be fairly easy to see as well. We're talking the back half, the mag, etc. These shapes are what you honestly need to look out for when reskinning a gun, as they do determine what can be recolored later on. Now, after you guys figure out what your shapes are, this is when you want to go ahead and either use the pen tool, which I recommend, or use a 100% hardness brush to color in each shape that you just separated with different colors, and also separate layers. That way, each part of the gun has its own separate masking. And this is just so that you can see the different shapes easily and also check if you miss something. This part is definitely the most tedious out of the entire process, but you want to make sure that it's also absolutely perfect so that the masking itself is super clean. After filling in all of your shapes in different layers, you're ready to place them inside some gradients. Now to do so, you want to hold control on your keyboard and select the thumbnail of the first shape layer. This will pretty much give you guys an active selection of the shape. Also if you guys would like to, I'd recommend hiding all of your masking layers, that way you don't get confused. Now all you guys have to do is select your adjustments and choose gradient map. You'll notice your active selection is now the exact masking that you just had, however it's on your gradient map now. You simply want to do this for each and every shape you just created previously until all of the parts in the gun have gradients on them. And for me, I wouldn't worry too much about actually what the gun looks like right now, just make sure that there's gradients on all the parts. Once you guys are done with that, I'd recommend going through all of your layers as well and naming them for each section for ease of use of finding parts when you're deeper inside the process. But now that you guys are all done with that, here comes the uh, easy part. Alright guys, so you guys just watched me do a really quick little walkthrough of how to basically, of course, uh, separate or how to figure out where your parts are on the gun, how to then colorize them and block them off, and then of course then how to apply a gradient to your colorizations, and it's super super easy that I actually had to explain it, but of course, walking through it, it's going to take you probably the longest time while also designing this is also going to be longer, however, it's, you know, to get to point A to point B, it's a little bit longer, so for the record, of course, it made it look easy, but it is easy, it's just long, so... Anyway, really quickly as well, what I want to go ahead and do for you guys is kind of like walk you through the idea of actually how to use a few different things, uh, meaning the gradients, how to make whites, and uh, that's kind of like really it, because after this point, for me, it's just more or less giving you guys all the direction, and then of course you taking it whatever way you want to do it. So, really quick, before I even start, I want to make my skin all black, just so I can like, easier to, for me, really quick. Okay, so now we have the gun that is all black. Really quick, I want to mention a few things off the bat, right? So right now you can pretty much see that my masking for this right here, the silencer, of course when I first did it or pen tooled it or colored it with my brush, it's not perfect at the moment. So what I want to do for myself is, of course, to locate it. If you guys do not know this already, make sure you have your auto select off as well as this little drop down here that says layer when you're selected on your movement tool, which is this tool right here, right? So this tool is selected, make sure you have this selected off. Uh, I also don't have this usually turned on, so I would turn that off as well, but also have layer selected. But now when you're on this actual tool here, if you hold control on your actual keyboard, right, really quickly, if I zoom out for a second, hold control, if I select different parts of the gun, you'll see over here my layers that it is also selecting the actual uh, part of the gun. So right here, if I just hold control, select the silencer, I can then see that, hey, if I hide it, unhide it, that is me selecting the silencer uh, part. So 
Now that I'm here, I want to also say to myself, yo, like, it's actually not perfect. So I want to take my brush tool. Now, the cool thing about having, of course, layer masks and, of course, gradients, right? If I just use whites to just go ahead and kind of fill this back in, that's what I can go ahead and do. So, of course, you can see here, once you select on this mask, not here, right? You see how the colors are uh, blue and red. But if I select on the mask, it'll automatically make it blue, uh, excuse me, black and white. So, white will then fill in. So I can fill in these little spaces here and say, hey, you know, cool. But if, hey, if I, what if I go off a little bit too much? If I change my colors here, this little button right here switches the colors. Also, X on your keyboard switches the colors as well. So now it's on black, right? So if I zoom in and go ahead and just erase it now, that's how I can erase things. So masks are probably not going to be perfect the entire time. You can see up here, it's a little messed up. I can go through all these different things, take my brush, make sure it's white, and then color it just in case it uh, it's not perfect. Of course, I'm not going to really worry about it right now, but just for future notes, like, you know, that's what you should probably be thinking and uh, uh, understanding. Um, one thing as well that I want to also mention, let's just say we make this little middle piece here. Okay, let's make this middle piece a color. Now, let's say we actually made it green, okay? So I'm just going to make this green just because, right? So right now you might be saying, okay, cool, I can be done with this middle piece. However, what I would like to say to you guys is it looks a little bit, in the, in the words I want to use, is kind of cheap um, when you don't actually take away some of these other parts of the gun. So if it was for me, what I would do if you would find things on your gun that kind of resembles this whole thing, I don't know, this fire rate trigger, whatever, gun knowledge, right? So if I just use the my uh, brush again, right? I'm going to use black to erase. I'm going to go through all these different things just like so, right? And also get rid of these colors just like this. Right, so now this is going to be nice and gray, basically the undertone or the original base of the gun. Right, I'm just going to go like this as well, and let's also just say, yo, we'll make this also, you know, uh, you know, not green. Right, so right away you'll get more of an idea that hey, this looks a little bit more kind of like not mature, not lazy, but just more or less like hey, this is not all green. It doesn't feel quick and kind of like tacky. Right, so then you can go ahead and say, hey, if you use a black gradient, another gradient in this instance. So for me, what I would do is I would say, hey, I want these to actually be black as well, right? I'll take the gradient map, just like so, right? We'll just make it black, just like this, right? Right now, the gradient is a full white. It's over everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control backspace, not control backspace. I lied. Alt backspace, and that will quick fill in black. Again, remember what we said before, if I hold, uh, click on this thumbnail, my colors are automatically make it black and white. So if I just do either or, right, control backspace, all backspace, whichever one gets rid of it, you see how this is now all fully black. Then we can do here, take the brush, the white brush, go back in here, and then kind of like just say, hey, boom, add some of this in here. I'll make it somewhat quick and fast for you guys as well, right? Just like this, and then we'll just say, boom, we'll make this black. Uh, we can leave, I would realistically make that, uh, that orange tip green, but hey, whatever, right? So now you can see the colors, uh, the color blocking will say has a little bit more contrast and doesn't feel as cheap as either just being fully green. So keep that stuff in mind. So what I would do it, of course, here as well, right? I would just take this away. Let's say boom, right? I would take this away, make it a different color, make it maybe, maybe gray or something like that. Um, right now it won't be black because of course this is already fully black, but you can see things like that, leaving out those things or not coloring those things in or erasing those things. Um, it makes it look a little bit cheap and also a little bit just kind of how you say like novice level, let's say, right? But uh, one thing I also want to mention as well is white, right? So you guys are gonna be looking at your guns, doing your guns, and you're gonna be like, hey, uh, I should probably like let's just say toys. Let's just say like, dude, I don't want to get like flagged on YouTube saying the word, uh, you know, that word so many times. However, right, you take your skin. We'll just take say skin, right? And the bottom part, we want to make it white. So in this instance, you'd be like, hey, how do we make white out of a black and white gradient? You're like, hey, I have black on one side. Then I have white on the other side, right? If I just move this in the middle, right? You you actually can't really get white unless you add, of course, white to the actual gradient map. So if you guys do not really know about gradients, I didn't really talk about this yet, but left-hand side is always going to be shadows. Right-hand side is always going to be highlights. So you're, if you ever want to get an orange, let's say really quick, we'll, say, we'll, we'll go to the white in a second. If you want to say you want to get orange, you choose black on the left-hand side. Then over on the right-hand side, you want to just say, hey, I want to choose orange, just like that. Press OK, and there's your orange. So now that you guys are here, you're, you might be saying, hey, why does my orange look very muddy? That's because, of course, the black and the uh, orange, the mid tone that we're getting here is basically going to be more of a muddy tone. So what you want to do is you want to select this orange tip again, click on the middle. It'll add another orange. It'll also make it a little bit more vibrant and give you guys more control about what you're looking at. So if I move it toward the left now, it's basically saying, hey, uh, black, of course, shadows on the right side, left side. Uh, highlights on the right side, this middle anchor point we have, if we're moving closer to the shadow, we're saying, hey, I want this color, which is closest here on the right hand side, uh, the highlight to be more powerful, be more showcased 
over this left hand color. That's what's happening when you're moving it toward the left, right? You can see how it's overcasting it. If you move it toward the right, you'll see that of course the black will then be more uh, cast in. So just make sure that when you guys are doing things, I wanna go that crazy, but let's say right around here, you can move this midpoint a little bit uh, more to the left as well. That's kind of doing the same exact thing, but less dramatic. Um, so now you can see, now it actually looks orange. It doesn't look too crazy. Um, so those are the things I would end up doing for you guys if you wanna do, of course, color. But white, right in this instance, let's go back to it right black on one side white on the other side let's make sure this is pure white the same thing applies you click on the white over here you click in the middle that'll make it a little bit more white however what you have to do is you have to change your black shadow tone to be a bit of a gray not like crazy up here gray i mean a little bit down over here gray let's say right here is a pretty solid spot so i'll say 7a 7a for my gray that i'll probably use press ok Take this midpoint here. You can see it's a little bit like still eh, right? I'll take this, I'll actually take the full node first, move it toward the left, and maybe take the midpoint now, move it toward the left a little bit now too. And now you're seeing a little bit more of a nice white tone. So whites, I think, are the hardest to get on gun skins in this case, and also understanding to get more color from metal, putting gradients on metal, in this case, a gun, right? So if I just do this again, um, right? I'll just say gray for now, whatever. Uh, or let's just say red, right? This red is a little bit too crazy. If I want it to be more or less, you know, more shadows, you can get more shadows just like that, right? Take the midpoint over here or the uh, highlight node, click on the middle over here, make it more red, exactly, right? So from this point on, there's not much else I can generally teach you or to how to get a cool look, but there is another cool thing I can do for you guys as well, and that's adding texture to only certain parts. And so really quickly, let me, get, let me grab a texture. Cool, so let's just say a quick little self plug. If you guys have my background pack, which is my newest pack on selfie.com slash HQ. Okay, if I went over here and said, I wanna add this swirl to this part of the gun over here, let's say into the white section, right? So right now, if I, of course, remember before holding control, selecting on this part here, I can say, hey, this is where that part is. Let's move that up here, right? I don't want it to be white. Let's make it more of a red tone, let's say, okay? Let's make this uh, or let's just say like a gray, sure, like a more of a gray, okay? Press okay, press okay again. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically right click and then clippy mask this mask, create clippy mask, and this will basically, of course, attach it only to the bottom portion. You can see now it's only this little, this, uh, how do you say this, this texture is only on this part of the gun. Um, you might be saying to yourself, this is pretty cool, whatever. However, I want it to be more, uh, how do you say, blended in, we'll say, it, right? You guys will probably do like, hey, let's do overlay, whatever. Oh, that's not working. If it's not working, that just means you have to, of course, get rid of all your layer styles. And what I would do is just right click and then not rasterize it because then you can't change it again. What I would do is use a convert to smart object. So that way, now you can basically use all your different overlays and stuff like that. Um, if you guys have to change the color, you just basically double click right here on this paper and you can go into here and say, hey, I wanna change the color now, change it here, press okay, then save it here in this document. Then if you exit out, it'll update over on this side. So let's just say cool. You might be saying, okay, overlay looks cool and all, but it's too, how do you say soft, right? The way I would like to explain it and do it is I will double click on the layer, okay? Then when you have the blending options here, you'll see over here, uh, this layer, underlying layer, these are basically your blend ifs, if something's gray, something's white, it's giving you basically more, sh uh, how do you say, shadows and highlights, right? You're basically saying to yourself, hey, if I hold alt, underlying layer here, click this node, this will split the node. If I move it toward the left-hand side, it's gonna say, hey, let's get rid of some of the color, um, some of the un underlying color, right? And making it more blended. So now I can see if I move it toward the left, you're noticing now it's really, how do you say, grasping the color or the grasping the um, idea of all these different shadows and, and, and tweaks and, and depth in the gun. Uh, if I wanna move this to the left as well, I can probably do so, but it's not gonna give me much as well. But this is what you wanna do. I would say it's not the best if I use white for this case. Let's use like a different color in the middle here, just so you can see a little bit better. Let's just say we're using blue, okay? And then we're not using gray here. We'll use, like I said before, you click on the page. We'll use, I don't know, uh, let's just use white, sure. Save it over here. Go back over here, it'll save now. And now you can see it a little more easier. I think white on gray wasn't the best idea. However, right, you can notice now, if I move this, this is how it looks before. If I hold Alt, split it. If I don't hold Alt, it's basically taking the whole entire thing. It's gonna be really aggressive. But holding Alt, split it, move it toward the right-hand side. You can then see it, it's grabbing the actual skin a lot better. And uh, that's what you wanna do when you're adding in texture. So now that you guys know that, 
Yup, I think that's it. To be honest, these are the three different things, I guess, in the way how to make white, right? How to actually choose color and then how to add texture. After this, it's basically up to you to actually figure out what you want to do for your skins. Um, I created, how do you say, four or five you guys saw in the beginning of the video uh, for a lot of creators and it did really, really well. And it's also a really fun showcase piece to put in your portfolios or whatever. And uh, or just, you know, get some little bit of a clout on Twitter and just get a little bit of likes and, and followers from that. So with that being said, that is the end of the video here today for me. Uh, I just hope you guys just have a little bit of fun with it. I've been having fun with it for the past two weeks or so. You guys are probably noticing a little bit if you guys are in my community uh, or the esport community scene that it's kind of trending a little bit. Um, so yeah, think about Valorant, think about CSGO, think about Apex Legends, all these different things. You can get a lot of cool, how do you say, eyes on you. Um, and it worked for me, so hopefully you guys can enjoy it and love it, and uh, now you know how to do it. So, with that being said, I love you guys. That's so HQ out. You now got to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking proud of guys. Later, much love, and uh, peace. See you soon.